Ryan Day's having himself a, a fine time these days as well, bringing in uh, top level recruits, committing just every few days. We hear about another one, Steve, in regards to the Buckeyes Hall for 2020. Yeah, Mark, this past week was especially busy. They got uh, four verbal commitments here in the past week and are now up to 17 overall uh, for this recruiting class uh, for 2020. And uh, it began on June the 29th. They got a pair of guys, Darian Henry, defensive tackle uh, from Cincinnati, Princeton, ranked number 121 in the country in the 247 composite, uh, big-time defensive tackle. And really the, the storyline for Ohio State recruiting has been how they have done such a great job up until the last month or so uh, bringing in guys on the offensive side of the ball but uh, there had been very little other than LeJohn, Le, I want to hope I get this right, LeJohn Cavazzo, I hope I pronounced his name correct, uh, on the defensive side. He was the only guy they had committed until a few weeks ago, and now we're seeing a, a real run on defensive commitments for the Buckeyes. And that makes sense because when Ryan Day took over as the head coach, uh, he only retained one of the five defensive uh, assistant coaches, and that was Larry Johnson, the defensive uh, line. He brought in four new assistant coaches. It's taken them some time to build those relationships. Ohio State, in all honesty, has lost some recruiting battles this spring for some top defensive players, but uh, this revamped staff is starting to hit its stride with Jeff Halfley, Greg Madison, uh, Matt Barnes, and uh, Al Washington at the linebacker position. They're starting to bring in a few guys. And I think uh, Clark Phillips, the defensive back out of California, kind of started this run in earnest back on June 21st. National top 50 prospect out of California picked the Buckeyes. And then, as I said, it was Darian Henry on June 29th. Then an outside linebacker, Cody Simon from New Jersey, ranked number 153 in the country. Uh, July 2nd, which would be yesterday, <clears throat> they got uh, from Cincinnati Elder a tight end, Joe Royer. He had been offered by Cincinnati as well as just about every school in the Big Ten Conference, Michigan, Michigan State, Penn State, uh, Wisconsin, and all the rest. <clears throat> the Buckeyes had him in for camp a few weeks ago, and he ended up picking the Buckeyes. And then lastly, uh, this morning, Mitchell Melton, an outside linebacker uh, from only Maryland Good Council High School, uh, 6'3", 235. He had offers from Michigan and Notre Dame. So uh, obviously he was a highly coveted player as well. And so they have completely revamped uh, their defensive recruiting. Uh, this class, 17 guys, 10 on offense, six on defense, and one on special teams. Seven of the 17 are from the state of Ohio, which is probably a good percentage uh, for day going forward, 40 to 50 percent of his guys and five, count them, five of those seven guys uh, from the state of Ohio are from the Cincinnati area. And this is a key battleground area, I think, for Ohio State has been for years when you have Notre Dame and Michigan and now the University of Cincinnati, Kentucky and a lot of other places fighting to get in there as well. All right, Tony, what's your take on uh, what uh, Ryan Day has been working on recently? Well, Steve was exactly right with the, the defensive overhaul with the coaches because you've got Jeff Halfley as the co-defensive coordinator coming from the NFL where he has been for six, seven years. And so it took him a while to build those relationships. Now, if, if they wouldn't have had a coaching change, the Buckeyes probably get a commitment from five-star cornerback Elias Ricks out of California, five-star outside linebacker Mikhail Sherman out of New Jersey, I believe. And these are all guys that decided to look around and um, find other places to go because they wanted to play for Urban Meyer. And now Urban Meyer is gone. And so you start from almost uh, ground, uh, you know, from the ground up with building these relationships. And Legend Cavazos was committed, decommitted when Urban retired and had to get to know his new coaches. And, uh, you know, you got two new guys in the secondary coaching, Al Washington coming in, recruiting linebackers now. And, they're finally starting to get those linebackers. Uh, Steve mentioned Cody Simon, the number 10 outside linebacker. I think he ran a 4-5-3 uh, at the opening. And it's interesting to me, Mitchell Melton is the 6-3-235 guy who would be like your prototypical middle linebacker, but 
in today's football, he's an outside guy. Cody Simon at like 6'1", 218, fast, speedy, agile is your inside guy. And it shows you a little bit about how the uh, the offensive game is changing. But, yeah, for a while it looked like you know fans were worried where, where the defensive commits. And now, you know, a couple every week. And I wrote today, you know, how many are they going to take? How many commits total are they going to take? They're, they're going to have 19 seniors departing after this season. And, you know, what? maybe say conservatively four early entry guys, conservatively four guys who are going to transfer out. And so you're looking at 26, 27, 28 guys in this class if you want. The kicker that they have committed is going to be a gray shirt. So that gives them another spot. So it's going to be a big class, um, perhaps the biggest class in Ohio State history in the internet era since 2002. The biggest class previously was 26. I think they did that in 2018 and 2015, perhaps. But it's going to be a big one, and there's uh, yeah, still more to come. I'm not a recruiting guy, but I understand the rankings and the process and all that, but I just don't follow it. I'm doing all this other stuff following college football. But I'm going to make a very simple assessment, and you guys respond to it. Mitchell Melton. Okay. Steve had mentioned Notre Dame, Michigan after him. Ohio State's got the commit from Mitchell Melton. Okay. If recruiting rankings were perfect, if they were a perfect crystal ball into the future, then if you if you signed all the 10th ranked players at every position, then you would have the 10th ranked team in the country, right? Well, he's the 43rd ranked player at his position. So I would think the typical Ohio State fan would look at that and not be that impressed with the 657th ranked player in the country, but number 43 at his position. Well, you know, I think that over time what we've seen is uh, rankings are a, a prediction of uh, where guys would fit in at the college level, but they're not infallible. And <clears throat> I think that, you know, most times – if uh, you see a kid that's ranked like that uh, and he's determined, uh, he can make himself into an all Big Ten caliber player uh, just through ordinary hard work. There's obviously some kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, intangible that he has. And 6'2, 235 is pretty good. Uh, there must be some kind of intangible that Mitchell Melton has that had Ohio State, Michigan, Notre Dame, and many others, I assume Maryland wanted him as well as home state school. Uh, you know, it, it, <clears throat> the, the list of guys who've uh, come to Ohio State as maybe outside even the top 500 as this player is and gone on to become all Big Ten players and NFL players is pretty long. Uh, Malcolm Jenkins is one that I remember years ago was not – necessarily the highest uh, ranked guy, but he came in and played the nickel role as a freshman and was an All-American within a year or two. So, uh, you know, I think you have to take the rankings with a grain of salt. For every guy outside the top 500 who makes the NFL, there's guys inside the top 25 and the top 50 who never even make it to an NFL training camp. So uh, there could be reasons for this. And, and, again, I haven't done a deep dive on Mitchell Melton's case in particular to say, okay, this is why he's ranked, and I wrote it down, number 657 overall. Uh, yeah, is it a little far down the list? Sure. But, you know, there have been guys from that far down the list that have made it uh, uh, to Canton. Believe believe it or not, it has, it has happened. And along the way, they've been great college and NFL players. So uh, I think that uh, you, you, you look at it, you take it with a grain of salt, obviously – we live in a world where everybody is wrapped up in the team ranking and Ohio state's team ranking right now is number four. And man, that makes everybody's socks go up and down. If we have the number one class <laughs> or the number two, this or the number three, that, but I'm going to tell you what, uh, on August the 31st or whatever the day of the first game is, you can take that team ranking, you can crumble it up and you can throw it away because it doesn't get you a first down. Even against Florida Atlantic, it doesn't get you a first down. It's nice to have great, talented players, though, and that's all that this really means is that, that you're getting uh, 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 you're more than your share of great players. 
It's summertime, and uh, so I don't have any shoes on right now or socks, so uh, I don't know if my socks would have been going up or down. Anyway, but uh, mark it down, everyone. So we're going to give Mitchell Melton a 10-year NFL career. So in year 2034, <laughs> 39, inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame prediction by Steve Hellwagon. No, no, I didn't say that. 